everybody, this is Rosie, and yes, you are looking at a brand new microphone. So thank you so much for more than 100 subscribers. I didn't think that my channel would go from 30 subscribers to more than 100 quite so quickly. And I'm just very, very grateful, and I, um, I hope that we can make more videos together. So a couple things about this video. How is it going to be different from the other two reaction videos that I did? For one... I don't think I'm going to give you a beat-by-beat -beat reaction of my face as I watch the clips. I really feel like it's taking way too long to watch it that way. So in some cases, I'm going to summarize the scene, and in some cases, I'm going to give you a full frontal reaction face, um, depending on what clip I'm talking about. If you haven't watched the first two videos of the series, please, please do. If you'd like me to do more X-Men movies, any other kind of movies, superhero movies, I'm very happy to do it. I love superhero movies. I think they're ridiculous and stupid, and I love to watch them. And when we left off, Magneto was being creepy towards Raven. Pinky. So we're gonna dive right in into one of the scenes that probably makes this movie as popular as it is with X-Men fans. Pretty much every Charles and Eric interaction that really makes this movie. <laughs> what do you know about me? Everything. So following the scene with Beast, Raven, and Magneto, he attempts to steal information about Shaw from the CIA. Charles stops him with the ever reassuring threat slash promise that he has a choice. But Charles could probably change his mind if he wanted to. I won't stop you leaving. I could. But I won't. Like, honey, this is what he puts on the helmet. You can't just tell a man that at any moment you could literally go inside his mind and just poof change it. So Magneto stays with the CIA because Charles is so pretty and his hair is so soft. And we learn about Cerebro, a machine that uses Charles's telepathy to locate mutants. Were I Charles and I had spent most of my life hiding from the human world. <coughs> right. Raven, get coat, please. The last people that I want with a mutant tracker is the US government, like the CIA. I would not trust them. In my opinion, the CIA just gave him like a dental plan and like a pension and he was he was ready to turn over the entire mutant race. What an adorable lab rat you make, Charles. Don't spoil this for me, Ike. No. I've been a lab rat. I know when I see one. Do you have friends like this? Like, do you have friends that make jokes about their own trauma? Which is their right. They're allowed to do that. But it puts you in this position where you're not sure if you're allowed to laugh. Like, <laughs> I'm so sorry that happened to you. <laughs> In the ensuing Cerebro montage, we meet Angel, who works as a stripper in, in this movie and who in the comics, and I cannot stress this enough, is underage and has no relationship to this kind of work. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with this kind of work, just that this is not something the characters, like, does in the comics. And it just leads me to believe, because they cast a woman of color to play her, that they sort of assigned her this level of sexuality that's a little bit strange to me. And you have to assume she's hiding her mutation because the majority of the mutants in this movie are. And yet she shifts in front of Charles and Eric in plain view of what I hope is like a one-way door. Like they, can, they can't see in, but you can see out. That's the only way that it makes any sense to me. After Angel, we meet Armando or Darwin, who in the comics is not a taxi driver. Alex, who in the comics is not in juvie. Banshee, who feels more like Shaggy from Scooby-Doo, I guess, and who is not Scottish from what I can tell. And we meet Wolverine for about five seconds. Excuse me, I'm Eric Lentra. Charles Xavier. Go fuck yourself. Hugh Jackman, by the way, has seen, touched, and complimented an enamel pin that I designed because one of my supporters, somebody who follows me on Tumblr, who really likes my work, gave it to him at a show. People who follow my work are like the best, and that includes you. If you're watching this video, you are the best. Please go out there and give Hugh Jackman more of my stuff. What's your name? How about Bigfoot? <laughs> well, you know what they say about guys with big feet? And then every Hank Alex Fick was born. I can't do it in here. Come on. Come on. Alex. Alex. Peer pressure. Alex. Peer Alex. pressure. Alex. Peer pressure. <laughs> These kids said fuck government property. Yeah. Charles and Eric are so touchy so early in their relationship. Like here are some men that 
are looking for the intricate rituals. Intricate rituals to touch each other's skin. So Charles, Eric, and the rest of the CIA are trying to infiltrate a Russian um, base so that they can get some information on the missiles. Emma Frost has been spotted at the base and Eric really doesn't want to lose sight of her. He really wants to make sure that he doesn't lose any connection that could lead him to Shaw. And in the process of getting the information that he wants, he kind of goes completely rogue. I'm not CIA. You can stop trying to read my mind, sugar. She say sugar? I didn't realize this was rogue. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> Nothing against this actress specifically. It's just, uh, what was the director thinking when she came out of that chokehold and she just reacted like, mm hmm. I know that when a man almost decapitates me, <laughs> I react like, mm hmm. <laughs> Fair warning. What's about to follow is one of the stupidest, most pointless. It makes no sense. Nobody liked it. People complain about it to this day. The death of Darwin. Adapt to this. What can we say about that? A man who literally becomes death in the comics when he is killed because his body is designed to survive any event, any catastrophe, is fed a little bread ball of nothing, and then he just scatters into ashes. Why? Why? so much worse that they have that entire scene to make Alex a better character. They killed Darwin off to make Alex a better character because it was his power, his uncontrollable energy that was redirected to kill Darwin. So he has all this, he already comes with a lot of man pain just from his backstory. He was in juvie, come on, do we really have to kill Darwin? Do we really have to fucking kill Darwin? After this incident, Charles comes back and decides to take the children away from the CIA facility where they're not being protected and to his family home in Westchester. There's a sequence in which Charles has individual training sessions with each of them and it's very cute, very interesting. It really embodies the spirit of the X-Men, this kind of school of young mutants getting the help that they need. I can't make fun of it. There's a beautiful scene between Charles and Eric where he taps into his psyche and sort of brings forward a memory that that maybe Eric wouldn't have been able to access on his own since it was trapped behind walls and walls of trauma. What did you just do to me? I know personally that when you're very dedicated to revenge, to getting back the people who hurt you, you rarely think of the good times, the good things in your life, because you don't want to bring those warm, good feelings into, into your current state of mind. Because then it, you risk hurting the happiness that you felt in those moments by associating it with times where you feel bad. I will point out though, in these scenes, there's basically like zero mourning for Darwin. And I think later in the movie, it continues on the same way. I understand that they didn't know each other for very long, but as Jennifer Lawrence overacted for us, This was a very traumatic experience for these kids. I personally think if we had gotten a little bit more attachment on their part, like we see how easily they're driven to fight for someone who they barely knew, then I would be able to respect these X-Men a little more. I mean, we saw Darwin literally throw himself in front of them, literally throw himself in front of Angel. He was a heroic guy. And oh my God, there's still 40 minutes left in this movie. Dude, listen, when I started this third video in this series, I really, really, really wanted to make it the last one. Like I really tried so hard to rush through it. It's my birthday this weekend. I'm recording on the same day that this is gonna get posted. My parents are moving furniture around the house. I am wearing a different shirt than when I started. My camera turned off. I can't get it to turn back on again. So like, I am trying. I am trying very hard to get through this movie as quickly as I can, as entertainingly as I can, but clearly is not working out. Oh well, 
We'll see if we can finish it next time. I hope you guys will stick with me. I promise in the future when I do movie reviews, reactions, commentary type thing, I will just get to the part that I want to talk about, sort of skip all the fluff. Thank you guys so much for subscribing to my channel. Please feel free to share the video on social media. Please feel free to reach out to me on Twitter. It really helps when you guys comment, when you subscribe, when you like my videos. I don't make any money from this. I'm doing this for fun right now. And any interaction that I get with my audience is what makes this an enjoyable experience. See you guys next time. I'm so sorry that we couldn't get through the movie this time. This is Rosie, signing off.